In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel a accounts receivable agent report within QuickBooks Pro 2020, QuickBooks Desktop 2020. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by selecting the view dropdown and the open windows list. We're going to be considering here an accounts receivable aging report whenever we think of any type of report that isn't our major financial statements balance sheet income statement we want to consider how it relates to supports or ties into the major financial statements balance sheet income statement this one dealing with accounts receivable therefore tying into the balance sheet so let's go up to the balance sheet first and then we'll go and we'll think about how the accounts receivable will tie into it and support the balance sheet account we're going to go to the reports up top we're going to go to the company and financial. We will then scroll down to the balance sheet standard. Within the balance sheet standard, I'm going to change the dates. I like to do so in the customized reports. We're going to go to customized reports, change the dates from 01012020229020. That's January through February 2020, then OK. There we have our report. Here we have the accounts receivable. What is accounts receivable? represents the money that some uh, somebody owes to us typically customers owe to us therefore that this is going to represent customers owing us money the next question we have with the accounts receivable well is well of course who owes us the money so we want to know who owes us the money so that we can try to collect on the money that is owed to us therefore we need a supporting document to do that notice that it's not enough to go to what would be similar to a general ledger report or in this case a transaction detail report for, for example, if I double click on this, we do get a more detailed report called a transaction by account, which is basically a general ledger type of, of listing. It gives us all this detail. We have the invoices and the payments. However, it's listed by date and not by customer. So it's not very useful for us uh, to think about it by customer. So we need something by customer. That's why we're going to have to track it in some other format. And we also want to know not, not just, you know, who owes us the money, but how old is it? How past due is it? Are there people that haven't paid us on time? And that's where the aging report comes into play. We've got the people that owe us money and how old or what's the aging reports that they owe us. So to find this, we can go do it a couple different ways. And also just to point out here as well, this is, this is a type of report that many large, if you're in a large company, it could be a basically a full-time job to be tracking, you know, the customers dealing with these aging reports and, and thinking about who owes, you know, who owes us the money and, and collecting on that information. So these type of reports are some areas within the accounts receivable cycle, which uh, could be full-time jobs to be reviewing the, this type of information. So this is a very important uh, report for many types of uh, businesses and organizations. So if we go up top reports, we could go down to the customers and receivables and then find the aging report. However, you may want to go up here if it's the less familiar report to the report center. So let's go up to the report center and then I'm going to maximize this screen. We're in the standard uh, tab up top and then I'm going to be considering the customers and receivables. Within the customers and receivables, we want the accounts receivable aging summary. Accounts Receivable Aging Summary has the dates down below. I like to run the report, then change the dates. Therefore, I'm going to run the report. Here is the report. Then it only has the single date up top. We could use the customized reports possibly for the range. Don't really need it here. Again, why does it only have one date range? Because it's supporting a balance sheet account. And it's really saying how much people owe us at this point in time and how past due are they at this point in time. It's a point in time report, not a report measuring performance over a time frame. Therefore, we're just going to put the date of 022920. And there we have it. So uh, interval days 30, that's going to be the intervals up top. So the 30 days. So how did we read this report? Obviously, we have uh, the total down here. So if we're just talking about who owes us the money, here's the list of customers. These are customers. The total is going to be in the far right. That's at 11274 That should tie in to the balance sheet. If we go back to the balance sheet, we're at 11274 So these two reports tie out. It's a supporting report to the balance sheet for accounts receivable. Back to the accounts receivable aging report. Then we're going to be breaking this report out based on how old or how past due the information is or the payment is. 
So for example, uh, music stuff store down here is current. They have the 630, but it's all current. If I was to double click on this amount, then we get the detail related to it. If I was to double click on this invoice, then what we're saying is we invoiced the client with this invoice. It is still, uh, it's not past due at this point in time. So we haven't received the payment for it. We sent out the invoice and in essence, the bill to the customer. They have not yet paid it. However, it's not past due. So it's okay at this time. Closing this back out, closing this back out. So then if it's between one and 30, now it's past due between one and 30 days. If it's between 31 and 60, it's past due 31 and 60, 61 and 90 past due and over 90 days. So obviously the more old or the more past due this, these uh, invoices are, the more concerned we are. So if we were to think about this invoice, then we're going to say, all right, that's kind of past due here. We might want to think about and use this report to think about when we would want to send a follow-up uh, type of email to, to uh, try to facilitate collection on it. So these are going to be the past due amounts. So that's how this would be read as it gets to be more past due, of course then we're going to be considering are we going to get paid is this something that we're going to have to possibly write off as bad debt because we can't uh this this customer possibly is, is not going to pay us we're going to stop doing business with them possibly uh if that's the case so uh now we're going to do some standard formatting of this report we'll go into the customized reports up top to do some of our standard formatting we're going to go into the headers and footers we're going to re be removing the date prepared the time prepared and uh, that's going to be it. We have the name up top. Looks good. Everything looks good here. We're then going to be putting in the footer Smith uh, CPA just for an example of a footer type. Then we're going to go into the fonts and numbers and we'll do our standard fonts and number thing. Any negative numbers we're going to put with parentheses. Make them red. We're going to remove the pennies. I'm going to take off the cents. Then we're going to say OK. So that looks pretty good. Now we're going to print this report. We'll print it as a PDF. We'll say we'll export it to Excel, an existing workbook that we have set up in prior presentations, and then make a PDF with all the reports we have thus far. So to do that, we're going to go to the print up top reports. We're going to print it to the cute PDF printer. We will then say print. Then we're going to get the dialog box to say, where do you want to put this? We're going to be putting it into the financial reports. We're going to name this. I'm going to put the dialog box right underneath and call it an A. Now you can't have a dash normally, so I'm just going to call it AR with no dash. Aging, and I'm going to just say 2020 and then save that. Then we will export it. I'm going to go to Excel. I'm going to create a new worksheet. It then will be going to an existing workbook that we have set up in prior presentations. Existing workbook. I'm going to browse to locate that workbook. It's in section one through four double click in the excel worksheet and then export here is our excel worksheet we're going to do our standard type of formatting i'm going to go all the way to the left i'm going to remove this sheet so i'm going to right click on the quickbooks desktop right click on that and delete it and then i'm going to go all the way to the right i'm going to look for that new sheet that we have made that sheet one i'm going to pull it all the way to the right so i'm left clicking on it and pulling it to the right so it's at the end then we're going to go to the page layout tab. We're going to say, okay, we see the split panes. I would like to remove them. Therefore, we're going to go to the view tab up top, windows group. We're going to check the split item to remove the splits. Double click on the worksheet. We're going to call it AR aging. And then I'm going to go back off of it. I'm going to go back to the normal view. There's going to be our report. Then I'm going to uh, save this. I'm going to save it as a PDF file with all the reports we have thus far. Therefore, we're going to select the file tab up top. We're going to go to print. We're then going to go to the entire workbook. So we're going to print the entire workbook. And then we will say uh, print where it's going to go to the cute PDF printer. Then we'll say print. Then we're going to locate this. I'm going to put this in section one through four. I'm going to write on this financial statement and say yes. Then we're going to go into section one through four here. And now I'm going to delete this one because it's been changed. Now we can then attach this. If we go into all, all the reports we have, we have a lot of reports then, or we can go back to this section. We can then right click on this. If we want to attach it to an email, we can say, let's zip it. 
and we can send just that one zipped file which will have everything in it we could send the excel worksheet if someone is, is okay with the excel worksheet or we can send the pdf file which has all the reports in it that we have created so far that includes the balance sheet the profit and loss the co comparative balance sheet and then the summary balance sheet the income statement the comparative profit and loss the vertical analysis profit and loss and then the graphs that we have created for the sales graphs and the expense graphs and then we have the sales by customer summary and the sales by item summary and finally the accounts receivable aging summary